to win the war in your mind. Amen. Get your Bibles. Go to John, the eighth chapter, verse number 42 through 47. Um, I hope you are taking notes and got your praise. Amen. You're going to need both for this message. Amen. John 8, 42 through 47. Amen. John 8, 42 through 47. And um, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Amen. I know y'all don't have it back there because I couldn't make up my mind which scripture I wanted to start with. Praise the Lord. Just type it in and get it on the screen for us. John 8, verse number 42 through 47. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation, NLT Translation, John 8, verse number 42 through 47. The Bible says, Jesus told them. Now, I, look at me, look at me, look at me. This is getting ready to be a real tough text. Okay? So breathe in and breathe out. All right? Jesus told them, if God were your father, you would love me because I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I'm saying? It is because you can't even hear me. Verse 44, for you are the children of your father, the devil. And you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. So when I tell you the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Which of you can truthfully accuse me of sin? And since I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God. But you don't listen because you don't belong to God. Go back to verse number 44 where I'm really just using this as a springboard for where we're headed. Verse number 44 says... For you are the children of your father, the devil. And you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. I want to preach and teach as a spiritual guy from this subject in mind, locked in lies. Locked in lies. Locked in lies. Uh, when I was growing up, one of my aunts would sit on the front porch, and as people would pass by, they would come up and talk to her. And if you were raised in the hood like I was, you would know that some of the best entertainment is the people that walk by your house. My aunt would sit there, and people would walk by, and they would come up and get to talking to her. And my, my aunt would have a full conversation with them, go through the rigmarole of the entire conversation, and as she would close out the conversation, the person would start walking away from her. And she would look at them and say, all right, see you later. And my aunt would look over at us and say, another lie. <laughs> my grandmother, who was not too far from that, loved Jesus with all her heart. But she had this propensity that if somebody was telling her untruths, she didn't just call them a liar. But if you're old school like me, when they expressed themselves, they held out certain words. And so my grandmother would say, she's a liar. 
because the emphasis was how much of a liar they were. If she just said they lied, they're a liar, it just meant they lied every now and again. But when my grandmother would say she's a liar, <laughs> Lauren, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you knew that it meant they lied all the time. Is there anybody in here that can't stand being lied to? I can take a lot of things, but one of the most frustrating, difficult things is somebody that continues to lie to you. I am raising four children, and I am realizing that the scripture born in sin and shaped in iniquity means that you can model whatever you want to model in front of them. But they are born liars. Did you do this? No. It wasn't me. And one of the most insulting things is when you see it with your own eyes and you are looking at them and ask them, did you just do that? And they will look right, right in your face. No. Now, it's one thing to expect it for a child, but it's another thing when you're good and grown and you still a liar. It, it is difficult. It is, it is difficult to deal with somebody that is constantly lying to you. And for the most part, if we have a real good conversation, many of you would dismiss people out of your life that constantly lied to you. Truth of the matter is that we are quick to cut people off when they are constantly lying to us. Don't, don't tell your business, but you ever been in a relationship with somebody who couldn't tell the truth if they tried? <laughs> have, have you ever been dating somebody, married to somebody, in relationship with somebody, and every other word out their mouth is a, it's a lie? Does it grind your gears? Does it work your ever-loving last nerve? And for the most part of uh, most of us would agree that when people lie to us, we cut them out of our lives. But Christians have someone lying to them all the time and believe every lie they ever tell them. What happens when you live your life out of the lies that you have accepted from the enemy? There are many of us who are sitting in here right now who are trapped in a self-made prison because we believe the lie the enemy told us. And for many of our lives, the only thing that's holding us back is the lie. There are things that the enemy has taught and told us that we, that we believe and we hold on to and we have not done anything with it. So we live our whole lives in a lie the enemy told you. Here's what I've discovered. You can't change what you don't confront. And if you ignore the battle, you will lose the battle. Ephesians 6 and 12, not on the screen, but it reads, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of, of this dark world, against spiritual wickedness in, in high places. The enemy, our adversary, I hate to bust this up and tell you, is not your boss. Your enemy, your adversary is not your spouse. Your enemy, your adversary is not your ex. It's not even your neighbor, but, but you are fighting, you and I are fighting against a spiritual enemy and his name is the devil. And if you think that is too extreme, that you just don't look at your life like that, that's exactly what your enemy wants. Because the enemy's greatest trick is convincing the world that he doesn't exist. 
saying saying doesn't does he doesn't want you to believe in him so he can work subtly in your life so he knows that if you ignore him he can invade your mind he can plant seeds of doubt confusion worry depression and anxiety that will continue to grow up because his job description is found in John 10 and 10 the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy because he wants to keep you from God and from the life that God has for you he wants to keep you from ordain relationships with those that you love the most. He wants to rob you of your inner joy and your abiding peace. He wants to strip you of your fulfillment and making a difference with your life. If he can just steal, kill, and destroy. And the enemy is doing a great job and he has us locked up by lies he told us not yesterday, not last year, but when you were five years old there was a lie, a seed, a plant that was planted in your spirit and you grew up with that thing and you've been locked into lies. What if you got a chance to live your life outside of the parameters of the lies that the enemy has told you? You've always said you'll never make it. You've always said there's nothing to you. You've always said it'll never come out. But if you ever got this, got rid of all the lies the enemy ever told you, what would your life look like? How far would you be in your life if you believe you can overcome? How far would you be in your life if you believe you can come out of this thing? How far would you be in your life if you believe that no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper how much victory would you walk in if you believe what God said about your life and I came in here to announce to somebody it's time to get unlocked from the lies the enemy has told you all your life I need to know is there anybody in here that say I'm getting ready to get past some lies the enemy has told me now how does the enemy do this he lies Satan is a deceiver And his strategy is to defeat you by persuading you to believe his lies. Jesus warned us in John 8 and 44, we just read it, that the devil is a liar and the father of lies. Because Satan told the very first lie recorded in history. Satan told a lie to Eve in the Garden of Eden. After planting seeds of doubt in Eve's mind with a question in Genesis 3 and 1. He directly contradicts God's word by telling her, you will not certainly die. Somebody say another lie. lie. And with that one lie, Satan led Eve to her death and Adam followed. So we all are now locked into a lie. He convinces you that you are broken when God trying to let you know you actually bless. He's convincing you that you, there's nothing more to you. When God has convinced, this God is trying to show you that there's more to come. He's convinced you that it'll always be like this. When God is trying to let you know that tomorrow's going to be a better day. Oh, God. And I need to know, is there anybody in here that's tired of being locked up by a lie? Because the enemy is after me being locked in a lie. The enemy is after me being locked into the prison of lies. But I need you to touch your neighbor real good and tell them, but it's time to break out. Uh huh. It's time to break out of the lie the enemy has limited you, your life. It's time to break out the lie that brokenness is your portion. It's time to break out of the restrictions on what you believe and what you can do and where you can go and what God got next for you. It's time for somebody to break out. I am tired of saints walking around talking about a good God but living a bad life. I'm tired of saints walking around feeling like a victim when you're actually a victor. I'm tired of saints walking around not realizing that God got more and better and I need you to break out of what you've been in I don't care if you've been in it for a decade I don't care if you've been in it since you was five I don't care if you've been in it since last year God says it's time to break out whom the sun sets free is free indeed is there anybody in here that's ready to break out of any lie the enemy has ever told you watch this we must break out Because when you believe the wrong thing, it will impact your life. Let me say that again. When you believe the wrong thing, it will impact your life. Okay, let me give you an example. For centuries, for centuries, people believed that the earth was flat. So as a result of their belief, they wouldn't venture out far in the ocean because they feared that they might sail off the edge. Mm, You can Google it right now. There's still people out there that believe the earth is flat. So you better not go over there because you're going to fall off and be in space just floating. 
Watch this. And it's the same way with the lies of the enemy. Because when you believe his lies as truth, it will limit your life. Where we can go and what we can do. For years, you've believed that you are inadequate. You've allowed the inner voice in your head to talk you out of who God has made you. You've allowed negative messages that you have carried from childhood to affect who you are today. Unhealthy and destructive conclusions that we have, that we have come to believe about ourselves. And God is saying, I didn't ask you, who told you that you were naked? Who told you all oh, this stuff? Because I need you to dismiss and divorce yourself of this stuff you believed for all this time. Satan's strategy to win the battle in our minds is to get us to believe lies because the lies will keep us living in shame and defeat because the lies we believe and base our lives on actually become strongholds. Let church say strongholds. Now, I know you think a stronghold smoking, uh, uh, smoking, drinking, and sexing. I know you think that's a stronghold. I know that you think stronghold is your habit, but behind that habit, there's a belief system set up there. It is a lie that you have believed that that's the way you're supposed to be. Uh-huh. Let, let me teach this for a minute. That's why Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, verse number 4, and that the weapons we fight have divine power to demolish strongholds. Let church say demolish strongholds. Now, to understand this phrase of what Paul is saying in 2 Corinthians 10, verse number 4, you have to understand that the word stronghold, translated from the Greek, means to fortify. It gives the imagery of, in the ancient times, of a stronghold was a building, a fortress, built on the highest peak in the city, so that if a city was attacked, the stronghold was often seen as unapproachable and impenetrable. In other words, you can't get in it because it's so strong that it holds whoever's on the inside, on the inside. And Paul then comes along and compares the lies we believe with that fortress. He says, like the walls of the stronghold, our lives have been re enforced over and over again becoming a bigger stronghold we believe them for so long that they have become a part of us we believe them for so long that they have become a part of us and it becomes a stronghold because we believe the lie for so long that it becomes a part of our identity let me talk about this real quick some of you think you got your mama's attitude and your grandmama's attitude because that's just who I am that's who I was raised that's how I am the devil is a lie you ain't got to live your mother's story all over again. You ain't got to live your daddy's story all over again. Ah, is there anybody in here that know that when God created you, when God saved you, you became a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things become new. You don't have to be limited by where you came from. I may have come from the hood, but it don't mean I got to live like I'm still in the hood. I might have come from poor people, but I ain't got to live like I'm poor for the rest rest of my life I can flip the script I can break the lie and believe that God is going to do something greater and something better in my life I need to know is there anybody in here that say I'm getting ready to bust up some lies that I believed all my life I don't have to keep living the same generational curse that I met my mama live that my daddy live that my granddaddy live that my great granddaddy live God is doing a new thing in me We have to bring down the stronghold. And Paul said we are to demolish it. Let's sure say demolish it. And the word demolish means destruction, requiring massive power. The word also means, watch this, I need you to hear this. When he says demolish strongholds, he's literally saying, another meaning of that word demolish means to lower with violence. To bring something down as if you have a wrecking ball. It means tear the roof off the sucker. It means you got to take everything you got and bring that thing down. Mm. It is amazing to me that we are quicker to fight people, but we don't have the strength to fight our own lies. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, not you, but your neighbor. Your neighbor's already ready to check somebody. I wish somebody would say something to me. Y'all know that 
that hand. Uh, I wish you would say something to me. And you're ready to go off because you think you can control that a whole lot better. But we don't want to divorce ourselves and fight against the lie that we have believed. That's why you got to stand right there when you're getting ready to go in debt. Uh -huh, getting ready to buy something you ain't supposed to buy and fight with yourself. Now, Philip, you know better than this. You, if you know if you get this, you're going to get yourself in a world of trouble. Let me put this back and leave up out of here because God doesn't want me to live limited and being broke all my life. Is there anybody in here that say, I'd rather fight with myself than to fight with you because if I fight with myself, I can end up a whole lot better. But if I fight with you, all I do is waste energy trying to change somebody I can't change. I'd rather work on trying to change me. You got to fight that thing. Tag your neighbor real quick and say, fight that thing. Yeah, fight that lie. Fight that you, that thing you've been believing all your life. Fight the thing that's been holding you back. Fight the thing that's been limiting your life. Fight it. You got to fight it with everything you got. Pastor, I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting. That's what the devil wants you to believe. That God says you got to square your shoulders back. Put your dukes up and fight like hell. You got to fight it with everything you got because the enemy is trying to take you out with the lie you've been believing. But do I have any fighters in freedom this morning? Do I have any people that's ready to put the devil to, to a fight I need to know are there any people in here so come on I need to know is there anybody in here that's ready to fight everything the enemy been trying to lock you in I'm ready to fight you got to bring that thing down with violence the kingdom suffereth violence and the violent Take it by force. Tired of you being a poodle. Time for you to be a pit bull. Tired of you being a chihuahua. All you do is got a, ba a bark. But God is waiting on somebody that's ready to sink their teeth in that thing. And to rip it apart. I'm ready to go after that thing with everything that I got. I need some people in here that's ready to go up in your house and announce to every demon and devil in your house. I know you've been tormenting me. I know you've been trying to keep me up at night, but you are dismissed by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony. Is there anybody in here that's ready to fight? Somebody throw your hands up and holler, fight! You got to fight! You gotta fight. You gotta fight. So can I ask you something? Let me ask you something. What's your stronghold? What, what lie has been holding you hostage? What truth, what mistruth keeps you from taking a step of faith? What, what wrong thought pattern robs you of living a life of freedom and joy? Watch this. You ready? You might need to write this down because you cannot defeat what you cannot define. <laughs> Minister Teresa said, say it again. You cannot defeat what you cannot define. And if you can't define it, you won't be able to defeat it. See, this system has you mixed up because now we call in sin an issue. I got an issue. That's too vague. It's time to call a spade a spade. You have to identify the lie that has become a stronghold for you and demolish the stronghold with the truth. Somebody say truth. Now, let me be very clear that what, what is truth? Truth, unfortunately, in our day and time, has become subjective. The truth is based upon the person telling it. When you look at our political system, truth is based upon who tells it. So if you're on the right side, truth looks one way. And if you're on the left, truth looks another way. Truth has become very subjective. Now, we don't look at a moral standard of the word of God anymore. Truth has now become based upon how we feel about it. <sighs> but Jesus said, I am the way, the 
truth, it, it means that who he is, he is nothing but truth. So my truth has to be rooted in Jesus Christ. Truth cannot be rooted in what your grandmama told you. Because your grandma was good and crazy with that crooked wig. Your truth cannot be what your favorite social media person is telling you. Because you don't know how they live in when that camera ain't on. Truth is not even based upon what I tell you. Truth has to be based upon what the word of God says. And we have too many people in the body of Christ that's running around with subjective truth. When God is trying to get us to ultimate truth. I don't care what your favorite prophet told you. If it ain't the truth, it ain't the truth. Look at your neighbor and say, I need the truth. Jesus said, um, listen, let me tell you about this devil. He's a liar and a deceiver. In fact, he's a father of lies. He, he was talking to religious people at the time who, who did not agree with who Jesus is. And Jesus said, the reason why you don't agree because you ain't my child. You are a son of the devil. It, it, what does he mean by when he says they're, they're the son of the devil? What he's saying is that they had shared attitudes, shared dispositions, shared desires, shared characteristics. You, you ever seen a child, um, let me talk to the mothers in here, that had the unfortunate incident of um, uh, uh, getting pregnant, carrying that baby for nine months, uh, you got on that table, pushed that baby out, had all that pain, had all that discomfort, um, you the child, you the mother that got to get up in the middle of the night and when nobody else get up and sit up with the baby, you the one that got to change all the diapers and do all that. And the insult of it is that child looks just like they daddy. <laughs> I did all that work and you got the nerve to look like your daddy. <laughs> and what Jesus is saying here is he's saying the reason why you don't receive my word because you look like your daddy. <laughs> yeah, you didn't see that turn. I had to make it clear for you. Why y'all think Jesus is the Jesus on these church fans with the little lambs and sitting there with the children? Jesus literally looking at folk talking about, your daddy is the devil. That's why you don't know me. You a demon. <laughs> if you don't understand that he's a liar and that he's a deceiver, you can easily get locked in his lies. So here's what I want to do. I ain't going to hold you long. I, I want to give you, come on, let's go. Ten of Satan lies to replace with God's truth. Now, let me be clear, because your praise went down when you saw that, le that number ten. <laughs> Joy just left the room real quick. Yo! <laughs> ten of Satan lies to replace with truth. This is part one. Check me next week for part two. All right. What are, what are some of the lies that Satan tells you that we need to replace with God's truth? Here's number one. You are alone. You are alone. Satan wants you to believe that you are alone. Satan uses this lie to discourage you, to make you feel lonely. Because if he can make you feel lonely, that creates distance from your God. Because the enemy knows that if he can create distance from your God, then he can derail your faith. Let me say that so you understand that. Distance from God can derail your faith. If he can distance you and I, then he can sidetrack our journey. He wants you to feel like you all by yourself. 
you came in this church this morning, you're sitting around a bunch of other people, you hug them, high five them, and it's like they're not even there. Because the enemy has led you to believe you are all by yourself. Nobody understands you, nobody gets you. My family don't understand me. My job don't understand me. My friends don't understand me. Everything around me is I feel all by myself. I'm raising my children by myself. I'm living this life by myself. I'm still single. I'm all alone. But God wants you to know that you are never really alone. I, I got to encourage you this morning. God is with you 24 hours a day. Seven days a week, 52 weeks in a year, 365 days in the year. He is with you through the good and the bad. He is with you through the ups and the downs. He is with you when folk die and when folk are born. He is with you when you got a job and you don't have a job. He's with you when you got married or when you got a divorce. He is with you whether you're in sin or out of sin. He is with you no matter what you go through. And you got to realize whether you feel him or not, he's still with you. You are surrounded by him. You are filled with him. You are covered by him everywhere where you look he is right there with you so you got to replace the lie with the truth that God is with you church say God is with me, God is with me. come on look at Isaiah 41 verse number 10 so do not fear for I'm with you do not be dismayed for I'm your God I will strengthen you and help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand God is with you wherever you go. Look at Deuteronomy 31, verse number 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care if you're sitting in the doctor's office and just got a bad report. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Let me, let me preach this for a minute. Even when life challenges your never God says I'll never walk away from you I'll never leave you and, and, and it, that, that word that phrase never leave you means God will never leave you alone he will never become disheartened or discouraged by you that blessed me Amber let me tell you why that blessed me because when I'm a funk when I'm in a funk when my attitude ain't right, I have a propensity to drive other people away. But I got a God that said, I'll never leave you. I'll sit right there with you while you're going through whatever you're going through. I'll never walk away from you. Is there anybody here that know other people will leave you? They'll see you coming and move out your way. But you serve a God that's right there with you while you're feeling what you're feeling. While you're discouraged, he said, I'm right there. While you feel like giving up, I'm right there. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'll never abandon you. I'll never leave or let go of you. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how hard the rain falls, I'll never let go of you. So the first lie the enemy tells you is that you are alone. And you got to replace that lie with God is with me. Here's the second lie the enemy tells you, you are weak. You are weak. How many times have you felt like you were too weak? to handle God's assignment on your life. How many times have you felt too weak to fight sin? Let's, let's have a real conversation. How many times have you felt too weak to even follow God? Because this is the place where another common lie Satan tries to oppress us with. God has made you strong and capable of living out his purpose for you, uh, uh, living out the purpose he has for you. We walk around feeling depleted, weak, worn out. It amazes me that we live in a time that when we feel weak and depleted, we stop the one place where we get our strength. Can I tell you something? For all these new Christians in here, 
But people that's new in the faith, people that's trying to grow in God, don't ever let the enemy convince you that you are too weak to come to church. Don't ever let the enemy convince you that you are too drained to pray. Don't ever let the enemy convince you that you're too weak to worship. Because he's trying to dis disconnect you from the very place that you get your strength. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Here's, here's, when you feel too weak, this is what you need to replace the lie with, with this truth. Here's the truth. You are clothed with strength. Somebody say, I'm clothed with strength. I'm clothed with strength. I need you to get this. I'm clothed with strength. You don't believe me? Proverbs 31, verse number 25. Look what the Bible says. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. Can I work this out just for a minute? The, the, the strength that, that, that is mentioned in that text, the strength that is mentioned in Proverbs 31, verse number 25, that strength is the strength of mind. What he's saying here is that when God is on your side and working in your life and you've accepted him as Lord, he's, he's God over you, you always have strength of mind. You got strength of courage. You got strength of resolution. It means that because what you have been going through, it has perfected a character in you to the place that you wear strength like in garments. Okay, I'm going to get this in a minute. I'm going to get this. Rika, come here for a second. You, you look so lovely. You're going you gonna to prove my point. Come here. Come on, Rika. Come on. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Oh, amen. Amen. Massage therapist now. That's what I'm talking about. Make that money, girl. He says... You wear strength and honor like clothing. Watch this. Can we take this off? Can we take this off? Yeah, okay. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. You look good. You look good. You look good. All right. Thank you. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He's saying, because I'm on your side, you're going to wear strength and honor like his clothing. You didn't get the strength and the honor just because you're cute. You got the strength and honor because you've been through hell. Okay, you're going to get this in a minute. You're going to get this in a minute. Watch this. So you wear strength and honor like it's a garment. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Mm -hmm. Come here, come here, come here. All right, go stand over there. Go stand over there and face this way. Watch this, watch this. Here's the problem. You ready? What was my point? You too weak? You too weak. Okay. Here's the problem. You wear strength and honor like, like it's a garment. But when people come to you, they don't see where you are weak at. They see where you're strong at. You're going to get this in a minute. So they start pulling on you and needing you more and more. And you're saying, I have nothing to give. But the reason why they pulling on you is because they see something on you that you don't even see yourself. You, got, you are clothed with strength and honor. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You ready? You ready? Here's the praise. Here's the praise. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know that life has been draining you. But say, neighbor, you wear it well. Okay, you wear all the hell you've been going through, you wear it well. You wear people drying you up, trying to take everything, you wear it well. You wear it well. Why are you sitting there with your face looking sad? You're clothed with strength and honor, and you wear it well. I need somebody in here to give God glory, because you wear it well. I'm depressed, but I wear it well. I'm broken, but I wear it well. I'm tired, but I'm wearing well. Thank y'all, ladies. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. If the enemy allows you to believe, if you sit up there and believe the lie that you are weak, you become resentful with people who keep trying to pull on you when all they see is you wearing it well. Okay. 
All right, let me explain something. This is why some people in here got a radical praise. It ain't because they ain't going through. It ain't because they ain't have life to life on them. They wear it well because watch this. Because even in my midnight hour, I can still lift up my hands and give God glory. I need to do a pause for the cause. On the count of three, I need the people that's wearing it well to give God the glory like you done lost your mind. One, two, three. Give God the glory that you're wearing it well. All right. She shall rejoice in time to come. Okay. Let me break this down. You, you weak. That's what the enemy has told you, and that's what you've been believing. That's the lie you've been, you mean you've been living out. Watch this. So you got you clothed with strength and honor, you're wearing it well. Then it says, She shall rejoice in time to come. Here's what I need you to understand. This is the revelation from the Lord. The Lord told me to tell y'all, hear me. Don't lose your laugh. Don't lose your laugh. Okay. Here's why I love pastoring the Freedom Church. Because I got some of the craziest people. <laughs> that what they say to some of the craziest things out their mouth. Um, you can't lose your laugh because even though you feel weak and you're wearing strength, it's your laugh that brings you back to where you need to be. There's some people in here that if I don't laugh, I'll go in a full-blown depression. I, sometimes I have to laugh to keep from crying. Jesus, I wish I had somebody. Oh, God. See, the enemy wants you to lose your laugh. So he wants you to fall out with all your friends. He wants you to fall out with all your associations. He wants you to fall out with everybody around you so you can stop laughing. You need people in your life that you can laugh with. Don't marry nobody you can't laugh at. You mean laugh with? No. Laugh at. I need to be able to laugh at some of the crazy stuff you do without you getting so mess, messed up and ready to go off on me because I'm laughing at you. Boo, you just crazy. You keep me laughing all the time with your crazy self. I am preaching this morning and I'm on point number two. Watch this. You can't lose your laugh. Watch this, 2 Corinthians 12, verse number 10, it's on the screen. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Could it be that God wants you to get to a place of weakness? What do you mean, Pastor? I, wait, I thought the lie was that I'm weak. There's a difference than feeling weak and declaring you're weak. Okay, because if you feel weak, I can do some things to get my strength back. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I was at my house yesterday, and it was just one of them days where all four of them became demons before my eyes. <laughs> all four of them just got on my very last nerve. I said, shut up. I don't want to hear nothing. Everybody be quiet. And the problem is I have a one-year-old that don't understand what that means. So I said, shut up. All three of them shut up, and he's still back there. I said, Lord. I need you. I need you now. And I'm sitting there. I need you to hear this. I'm sitting there, and I fed everybody. Everybody got their bath. Everybody trying to come down. And, and I'm sitting there. And Ivy stands up, and she goes to ask me another question. 
after I have answered 72 <laughs> of the other one's questions. <laughs> Ivy stood up, looked at me, and said, Pop, so I, and she stopped. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> and she went and sat down. And I'm sitting there, and I'm taking a moment. I'm trying to eat. Two little ones in the bed sleep. And all of a sudden, what I was feeling started to come down. Then the other one, Isaac comes down. He says, Pop, uh, can I ask you a question? I said, let me let you in on something. <laughs> Your sister is discerning enough to know when and when not to ask me for anything. I need you to read the signals as best as you can. <laughs> I need you as best as you can. Just read, work with me now. Read them signals. He said, okay. I just stood up and said, Pop, that's why I ain't asked you nothing. Because <laughs> I looked at you and realized you needed a moment. I said, Ivy, you right. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven <laughs> revealed this to you. I needed a moment. It was, watch this, I felt weak, but I wasn't weak. Watch this, because if I declared myself to be weak, I stopped being a father. You're going to get this. Because it is the identity that I take on that becomes the expression of what I live. I may have felt weak in a moment. I might have had a weak moment, but I'm not weak. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Because it's in my moment of weakness that the Lord gives me what I need to keep on making it. Is there anybody in here that can lift up a praise that said the devil counted me out, said it was over for me, but I got strength that came out of nowhere. I got some strength that I can't even understand. I need to know, is there anybody in here that can give God glory? I need you for the next three seconds next five seconds open up your mouth and let God strengthen you even though you feel weak I need you to open up your mouth and say Lord fill me again strengthen me again I may feel weak but I'm not weak because I got you I gotta go 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 I'm, gonna give you, I'm, I'm out of time. Let me give you one more and I'm done. I only got the three. I was supposed to get the five. That's all right. Number three. Number three. You're a failure. You're a failure. Here's what the enemy lies to you and tells you. You're a failure. Satan's job is to make you feel defeated, discouraged, and out of place with this lie. You're a failure. You messed up your credit, you're a failure. You had a baby before you were ready, you're a failure. You, you, you married the wrong person and now y'all divorced, you're a failure. You got on the wrong job and look at you now, you're a failure. Watch this. But we have to understand that failure is an event, not a person. It's a moment in time. It is not who you are. Failure is not determined by the mistake you've made. Your response to failure determines your ability to turn failure into success or progress. Because your response to failure will determine who you become as a person, but more importantly, who you become in Christ. It is how you respond to the failure. Because there are people who have failed and risen above it to become something better and greater than before the failure. Um, do me a favor, your, your neighbor going to get mad at this, so I'm not going to tell them, you're going to tell them. Say, neighbor, I'm glad you failed. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you didn't fail, you wouldn't become the person that you are right now. Ah, uh, because you failed, you are wiser, you are stronger, you are better than ever before. I had to fail in my finances to get better at my finances. I had to fail in relationships to find out what I really wanted. I'm glad. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm glad you failed. Because it's your failure that made you better. It's the difference between failing backward and failing forward. Uh, because it's the difference between the one who is overwhelmed and the one who rises above. Okay, 
So now it's time to replace that truth. You're a failure. So what do you replace the truth with? Come on, let's go. Your faith is your victory. Amen. Somebody say, my faith, my faith is my victory. Is my victory. Oh, your faith is your victory. Okay. First John 5, verse number 4. Look what the NIV says. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. See, the object to defeat an enemy in battle, watch this. If you're in, in battle, we, we, got, we got a war that just broke out the other day over in Israel. We got war over in Ukraine. There's wars all over the place. Wars and rumors of wars. As quiet as it's kept, we got a civil war going on in our own, co own country. Yeah. There are wars everywhere. And here's the object of warfare. The object to defeat any enemy in battle is usually decided by the person who gains superiority in war. Um, because if you have victory, it usually means that you have superior, superior skills that prove your adversary inferior to you. I need you to catch this. It means that if I'm going to defeat you, it means I got to be bigger, stronger, and better than you. Um, anybody used to fight back in the day? I mean, fist fight. Anybody used to fight? Uh-huh. Thank you for the truth. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's folk in here with razors and guns in their purse right now. I ain't got no fighters in here. Some of y'all act like you ain't, you don't know what I'm talking about. When you fought somebody back in the day, you, you would fight, you would always, what we call, size them up. Because I wasn't foolish enough to get in a fight with somebody who was bigger than me. I need to make sure you were the same height or shorter. I, I needed to make sure that my skills were superior to yours. Because if my skills were superior to yours, then I would have more likelihood to whoop your tail. Watch this. But in the spirit, we fight and win not because we're stronger. John is saying we are winners because of our faith. John is saying we are winners, watch this, not because we're greater, but we are winners because of the enemy's mistakes. You're going to get this in a minute. I would defeat you because you're smaller than me, weaker than me. But John is saying, you're not defeating the enemy because you're stronger than him. Because he's actually stronger than you. You are defeating the enemy, catch this, not because of how good you are, but because of the mistakes he keeps making. Okay, okay, okay. What, what do you mean? What do you mean, brother pastor? He made the grave mistake of thinking that your faith was too weak. That you couldn't bounce back from what you were going through. He made the mistake of thinking that your feelings were more important than your faith in God. He made the mistake in thinking that you would live the rest of your life being a victim when you realize you actually are a victor. He made some critical mistakes that every time he oppressed me, every time he did something to me, I did nothing but got greater in God. I would go after, okay, here it is. Y'all still ain't got it. It means that every time he tried me, I just prayed a little harder. Every time he came after me, y'all don't hear me. I just went after God a little bit more. And I didn't, I'm not stronger than him, but I became stronger because I learned his mistake. My failures would define me. He thought that I would allow my failures to keep me locked into this place. He's saying your faith is the thing that helps you to overcome the world. Your faith is the thing. Okay, 
Let me just take a poll. I'm done. Let me let you out. We only got a point number three. I got seven more. Um, um, how many in here realize that the hardest season of your life didn't shake you out of God? Can I talk to some real people right now? Can I talk to some real people? That even when you was laying in the hospital and the doctor didn't know what was wrong with you or how you was going to come out of this, it didn't shake your faith. That you still sitting there saying, I still believe God. When the person you love the most died and you had to bury them, everything on the inside of you said, I should, walk, I should curse God and just walk away. But there's something greater that in the midst of what I'm going through, that I believe God even when they died. Okay, I wish I had somebody. I need to know, is there anybody in here that say my failure built my faith? My hurt built my faith. My going through built my faith. And because I went through it, I came out stronger. I need to know, is there anybody in here that say that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's my faith that got me out of it and got me through it. It's my faith that rolled over my failure. Here it is. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. There's too many of us walking around here stuck in a place of failure, never realizing that the failure was used to build your faith up. You're not weak. You're not alone. Your faith is going to carry you through. I don't know who I came for this morning, but there's somebody in here on the sound of my voice. You need your faith built up by the time you leave this place. You're trying to hold on, but it feels like you're going to let go. God is saying, I'm coming after that lie the enemy told you. You're stronger than you realize. There's faith still on the inside of you. But it's time to exercise your faith. 